So thank you very much. Uh, I will stand here because my presentation is mostly visual and I need to be able to control everything. <laughs> so I am uh, truly happy to be here with all of you once again and I'm very thankful to Ms. Timotea Vrablova for the opportunity to uh, share my point of view and learn from others' knowledge. So, my paper analyzes alternative children book forms as a space that demands um, alternative reading techniques and stimulates the reader's creativity. I call those books spatial object books and the term describes the behavior of the book as an independent three-dimensional object. It is an attempt to summarize the untraditional book bodies with additional activating and three-dimensional characteristics such as pop-up and movable, tactile, animated game and toy books for babies, toddlers and children up to early school age. It includes books of the traditional codex type with a non-standard cutout silhouette, uh, like this one. Book bodies that transform into constructions with two or more spatial silhouettes. And book bodies that function almost only as an alternative spatial structure, which are basically new forms of a book body. So as an illustration and book designer, I have always been interested in ways of being creative within books, but uh, from a point of view of the one who designs the book. Um, so I was focused rather on my own creativity than on the one of the reader. And I started seeing the other side of that process during my bachelor's class in the National Art Academy in Sofia when I was supposed to design a non-traditional children's book and felt the need to get to know how children percept, perceive books before making my decision on what to create. Um, it was almost a revelation and um, we just discussed it that um, uh, it has already been mentioned in previous presentations, uh, realizing that, for example, giving a child the possibility to communicate with a tactile book could help him or her uh, get through the crisis of the first year, which is um, uh, based on the uh, mastering speech. So you don't only entertain your child, but you uh, give him a, a, possi a, a, a chance to develop and uh, become uh, more skillful in life in general. And this made me uh, so fascinated and it, it sounded to me exactly like magic. So um, it emerged into a master's project in which uh, I created a um, tent book which was supposed to be literally inhabited by the child and then into a PhD project uh, in which um, I dedicated myself to the topic of the spatial object book forms in context of development of contemporary book. So the book is an object in space, we all know this, but it is also a space itself, and it can be penetrated and inhabited by the reader. According to me, spatial object book forms make an additional step in this direction due to their particular relief and spatial composition. They demand alternative ways of reading. The reading process within such book forms is never lineal or passive. It transforms into a real, active, creative experience, sort of a game, a challenge, and an adventure. It stimulates and captures the attention of both children and parents and turns the spatial book form into an important location for family communication. This is something else connected with the uh, transitional, with um, uh, uh, 
object books that made me feel very different about them. Uh, because um, we all know that the book is an introversive object in which we think to be alone and experience uh, words and times uh, we might never experience in our actual lives. But according to me, before you think there for yourself, it is actually quite the opposite, an extroversive tool in our connections and life. For me, the children's book, the children's book, the very early ones, uh, take at least two people to function. Uh, so it is the future reader and an adult as an interpreter of its visual and textual content, but also as a co-player and partner. So I believe that before you cuddle your child and hug him uh, to make him sleep, actually you have the possibility to use the book as an alternative field on which you can build your own relationship and get to know each other better. So children books are an introduction to the world of books. And this is what I just mentioned. So it's probably most appropriate to lead the transition between game activities and working with fiction and scientific literature through books that are morphologically close to toys, but still suggest reading. Um, because um, their objective existence in children's life turns thus into something natural and the process of joint reading and playing becomes a home routine. I believe such an early experience has the power to generate a natural, natural interest and deep affection for books and reading and imperceptibly transform the child from a game participant into a reader. But it is also a process that simulates child development through active creativity, evokes emotional intelligence and affirms the closeness between us and our children. Books have been men's companion through all the centuries so far. So it's not easy to say when exactly the first spatial book form was invented, but we are sure that it predates the printing culture. Uh, book historians like Peter Heining and Anne Montanaro testify that systems of mobile disks were used in books um, in medieval times to illustrate philosophic theory theories uh, or as a method for calculation. So we could say that uh, a lot of the recent uh, novelties are actually book forms that existed before, but now they are being um, differently um, percepted by artists. Uh, so since children experience differently from adults, it's now well known that uh, we are supposed to think differently and pay extra attention to the way we introduce books to them. And according to me, as a book uh, designer and illustrator, it's not enough to go to your own past as a child in order to get the child's attention, you actually need to get in contact more like with your future than with your past. But before the 18th century, there were no, uh, basically no movable books for children, or even not movable books that were created only for entertainment and pleasure. So the first alternative books of this kind were the so-called Harlequinates, in which, as you can see, one image is being sequently transformed into another by lifting flaps. And um, while studying those books, I found uh, some uh, information that um, a lot of books like this created by children were also found and discovered, which shows to me that they literally stimulate creativity because children find it so, so uh, attractive that they want to try themselves. Um, and um, 
later on other movable elements like ribbons, folds, sticks, pop-ups appeared in children's books to generate a more and more vivid uh, experience and provoke more and more playfulness and creativity for both book designers and children of early age. And here I give some example about how, for example, the peep show Panorama Principle uh, has been used in ancient times, still being used today. Also, this, um, they call them the Venetian blinds, blinds from Venice, in which um, one image is being um, transformed into the other. And on the right side, you can also see an example how it is being used recently. So, um, uh, children, as I said, usually meet uh, the spatial object book when they receive their first um, tactile soft book. They have great advantages with, for little kids because they are totally harmless. And, um, but what we don't know often is that um, they stimulate the um, fine motorics because when you leave, let the child examine with its fingers uh, its surface, actually those uh, tactiles, uh, tactile parts of the finger are connected with uh, those parts of the brain that are responsible for mastering the speech. And somehow maybe intuitively, I don't know, how it happened, but they are, for me, they are not, um, it's not a surprise that those are the first books that the child normally receives. Uh, I want to place an accent on the word, I'm sorry, of Louise Marie Cumon. They were produced in the 90s, um, 1990s, of course. Uh, and they're presented by Les Trois an alter alternative French association. She created for her young son um, plastic books, which she treated like um, uh, a bed or a pillow. And I find the connection between this uh, way of behavior and the transitional object of Winnicott, which is supposed to help the child uh, when the mother is missing. It often, often happens exactly like this. You give the child a book and then you go doing something by yourself. And the softness of those books literally, re really, uh, makes ch the child feel more comfortable. And the Italian designer Bruno Munari, who uh, everybody in the world of design uh, admires for his achievement, he made an important step further. Uh, those are uh, his prelibri, which is a tactile set. All, all of those books are uh, made out of different material and sewn together with different book binding because um, um, he called this work for children Libri Illegibili, which means the unreadable books. And for him, uh, this, this uh, emphasizes the idea that books could be needed and used even by those who are yet unable to read. Now we know that it is without any doubt so, but uh, for example, when we were children, our parents tend to think that we will need the books when we are already able to read, or at least when they read to you a story you can understand. But Munari's vision um, sets the start of children's communicating with book much earlier. So um, in its overall impact, this set offers a variety of stimuli, sensations and emotions called both from perceptions and images. And he said, Prelibri should give the sensation that books are indeed objects made like this, and they contain a wide area of surprises because he believed that a book can only in engage the child if it's capable of surprising. And um, he had in mind a real big uh, lasting surprise that the child would uh, want to 
experience over and over again. And it also has its roots in the psychology of the child development because there is a certain stage of uh, ch child's um, development and they need to constantly uh, experience things over and over again. And per particular inspiration for me has always been Bruno Monari's Abitaculo, which is a modular bed and a play environment that kids can customize and control by themselves. Because he explained it was every moment transformable, like as if you're having your own reading spot. Um, Abitaculo became an inspiration for other book artists to give flesh to the dream of books to inhabit. And so did the Czech artist Kveta Patsovska. Is it correct to say Patsovska? Okay, because I, it has an accent and I don't know what happens with the C letter. Um, she worked on spatial object books she treated like architecture objects. And as a first art gallery, the child visits. It was also back in the 80s. You see, this is the same Volvel that was used in the 13th century, but it looks totally different because of the artist. So I have to mention the book art of Katsumi Komagata, who is an outstanding Japanese designer and shares Bruno Munari's vision for children's books. His uh, Little Eyes series he created in early 90s. He created them complying with the visual and intellectual perception of the newborns. And also his other book achievements mark my own attitude uh, towards books irreversibly. And you know, Conf Confucius has said, I do and I understand. And these words are overwhelmingly valid about the knowledge achieved through the process of spatial books, active creative reading. And it's not a surprise that um, pop-up book artists uh, like Robert Sabuda and Matthew Reinhardt uh, used these spatial ways in uh, moving encyclopedias. And another American paper engineer, David A. Carter, even chose pop-up book structure to bring art from museums to everyday life. About his book, One Red Dot, he told in an interview, with this book, I want you to touch the art. So can you imagine it's such a creative way to evoke children's interest and make them relate to the true great artists. Um, I have had the chance to observe this at home and I, I think it, it's really priceless and gives a great uh, uh, possibility. So I said about these repetitive actions which you can live over and over again with pop-up, you have it instantly. You close the pop-up and it's uh, the way it is every single book looks and then you open it, it's already a different world. And can you imagine a better way of a serial experience of a surprise than sharing it? So sometimes artists achieve that surprise and stimulate active reading process by leading the child through various incorrect or insufficient visions. Like you see here on the left, you have uh, several portraits of uh, French uh, kings, and you can only read the text which is dedicated to each of them if you find the correct image and in, fr in front of it the correct text. But you pass through series of uh, a funny, uh, images that might even attract the child more and it turns the process of reading. You, you, it's not a, that you just need to know about that person. You leave the book and enjoy it in a totally different way. So in other books, this process 
um, offers a series of equally possible images. Like, for example, the image which shows how the Cheshire cat disappears and only the smile remains. But it is possible all the time. You can have different faces, phases of what is happening. Uh, but every time children feel that they are the ones who make the change, who cause the change, who create it. And I have also had the chance to observe and analyze the way children react when they are offered the possibility to create a book. I have never experienced a case in which they create a traditional codex. All the time they suggest something that makes the book active or more like a toy or more plastic. Uh, and now I will tell you a little about the culture I come from because probably you have already seen the works of the artist I mentioned, but you probably don't know much about the artists which I was raised with their art and from whom I studied. So Anton Radevsky is actually the only Bulgarian book artist who describes his own spatial object book achievements as a result of paper engineering. And uh, when I discovered his works more than 10 years ago, I felt both excited and very proud um, because, um, for example, this work dedicated to spacecraft has got numerous editions uh, and has made a name for him in the late 90s. And he is probably more famous abroad than in Bul on Bulgarian book market. But as you can see, uh, his books are designed to educate and activate uh, parents rather than young readers. I myself say that he creates for big boys because his topics are so close to what my, my father would enjoy, for example, like the wild, wild west uh, and uh, <laughs> the Indians, uh, American Indians. Oh, he is so much interested in achieving more and more complex pop-ups um, that um, in he wants to chase a, a better and better uh, activity of his movable elements. Uh, so he's interested in producing a realistic uh, vision. And um, another Bulgarian illustrator, uh, this is one of his last uh, pop-up, uh, achievements. And another Bulgarian illustrator who stimulates creativity in her work is Jana Levieva, whom we lost last year. And like uh, Anton Radevsky, she also uses the potential of alternative book bodies, but she does it rather sparingly because she said uh, she wants her books to remain accessible on the market because, you know, pop-up books uh, they uh, are not that easily affordable. If you want to make a library for your child only of pop-up books, it will be a little bit harder for you. Uh, I have always admired the way she decides to turn um, traditional codex into a spatial book form when she encourages the child to cut a hole into a page, cut a part of it and create a door uh, in which... Um, uh, she, the child finds a slogan written on the wall of a children's room. And in her book, Believe It If You Want To, she gave readers a small treat on each page. You see, this is even on the book cover. It also has a flap. And you see that uh, the scary wolf is actually a funny tiny mouse. So it shows how... Things are very seldom exactly the way they seem to us from the first sight. I have always had the chance, I have also had the chance to create a special object book for the market, but only twice. The first is a book that was um, supposed to, to contain two book bodies in a Z shape. 
So uh, one part was dedicated to dogs and the other one to cats. And I decided to add a mask. I don't know if it's very well visible here on two flaps. They have um, one mask and you can read the one side like a cat or the other one as a dog. And the second time it was for a little bit older children for the Sofia uh, City Art Gallery decided to challenge visitors to uh, discover five sites uh, that are represented here by vintage postcards and art works of art, and also by text written from uh, famous citizens. So I created this. Um, and with this uh, slide, I'll just let you pop into something that is forthcoming. It's a project dedicated to the Bulgarian folklore. And since, the 2000, since 2001, the special object book is a subject in our art academy in department book illustration and printed graphics in the National Academy of Art in Sofia. Before that, alternative book forms have also appeared in students' projects, but then they became a part of the school program in graduating bachelor's semester. The task is formulated as a non-standard author's book for children, which means that students are the only authors of um, their creation. It is without any doubt inspiring, exciting to observe how young illustrators and book designers discover from themselves the artistic potential of volvels, harlequinades and z-folds, sometimes really just by intuition. When you're thinking what to do somehow, you get to a discovery that was made centuries ago. Um, and it's really very exciting and very special. And like this book, for example, which also suggests alternative way of reading before you because you have to follow edges of the page and searching the way the word goes to another page. It looks also like a um, small mountain to climb to get to the center. And there are no restricted topics or means of visual expression. Um, not few of the books um, suggest interdisciplinary touch. Uh, for example, this one uses copper tape diodes and literally generates electric light to tell its story. Art books are the next level for the ones who choose to become master in illustration. Unlike the bachelor's graduation tasks, students' art books are not meant for children or young adults. On the contrary, they are supposed to be an independent act of artistic freedom and creativity, but still quite often students decide to use a non-traditional spatial shape of pop-up and movable images and thus uh, to make the reading process different in their art books. Right now you have the possibility to see art books created by illustration master students uh, in Bulgarian Cultural Institute in Bratislava. The address is uh, Yesenskego number seven. You're welcome. And according to, oh, unfortunately you don't see much, but this is the way the, the book really starts producing light. <laughs> So, uh, some of those books suggest uh, use of extremely innovative technology, and it makes me look forward to a new flame within Bulgarian spatial book, and expect a true space sage for the image in general. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>